Good afternoon and welcome to our science and technology show. My name is Wellington Kodek and today we have a very, very special guest, Colin Somondi, who is the lead advocate and atomic ambassador of nuclear energy advocacy from the Eastern Africa of Radiation Protection here in Kenya. Karibu sana, Bwana Collins. Asante sana, nimefurai kwa hapa. Yeah. As we begin, what is uh, EAARP? So, uh, EARP, yeah. or EAARP stands for Eastern Africa Association of Radiation Protection. Mm -hmm. So, this is a, a professional association for practitioners uh, in the field who are using uh, nuclear radiation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, they are from different fields. It could be a medical field, it could be from the industry, it could be from agriculture, uh, it could be from nuclear energy, it could be a regulator. It could be from a government agency. As long as you have interest uh, in radiation or nuclear, uh, you are free to join our association. Yeah. Yes. And you deal with uh, nuclear energy advocacy. Yes, we deal with nuclear energy advocacy. Yeah. So before we go there, what is nuclear energy? Yes. So uh, energy is what drives uh, the economy. If I can just simplify it, uh, for example, uh, uh, like in your house, uh, yeah. If you want to watch a television, you must put it electricity, that is energy. If you want to eat, you must cook, that's a form of energy. Yeah. If you want to charge your phone, you must use energy. If you want to drive your car, you must use a form of energy. Uh, energy is life. Without, yes. uh, without energy, there's no life. Yeah. It's a major component for our activities. Mm. So, uh, uh, the difference between nuclear energy and uh, this form of energy is that uh, nuclear energy is a scientific form of energy where you split an atom uh, through different uh, 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 engineering process to create a very high energy yeah. that you can use to drive uh, the economy. Yeah. So why should Kenyans embrace nuclear energy? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, for sure, the need of energy is increasing. Yeah. Uh, it is predicted that by the year 2050, uh, the Kenyan need for energy uh, will have tripled three times. Yeah. So uh, what will Kenya use as an energy source? Uh, because we've said the energy uh, need is increasing. Mm. So there are several options. Uh, we can go solar way, we can embrace uh, uh, wind, uh, we can use uh, hydro, we can use geothermal, we can use solar or, or any other forms. Mm. But uh, our argument as a nuclear advocate is that uh, uh, nuclear energy is the best option. If you want to uh, realize our vision for the year uh, 2050, we must consider nuclear energy. Mm. Uh, for sure, solar, wind, those are small uh, forms of energy. It's good for maybe a, a homestead, for your electricity, maybe your uh, fridge. But for heavy industry, you cannot use uh, solar or wind. You must use a high impact energy. Yeah. So uh, uh, nuclear energy is the best option because it has several advantages uh, than all these other ones. Yeah. Yes. So why nuclear advocacy? So uh, in nuclear advocacy, we are trying to uh, uh, push the nuclear, nuclear agenda. Mm. We are saying, telling the government, please, uh, this is the best option for the country because we are neutral. Uh, we are telling the, the public, please accept this uh, nuclear, uh, don't oppose it because this is good uh, for your economy. Mm -hmm. We are telling the businessman, there are several opportunities uh, available uh, from the nuclear energy. We are telling the youth, uh, uh, if you want to develop your career, uh, career there are several opportunities within the nuclear uh, energy. So this is good for the whole society. Since uh, everyone is a cake that everyone can take a piece and chew uh, uh, from the bigger from the bigger cake. Yeah. Mm. Uh, as EAARP, mm. what are your objectives, your mission, your vision going forward? Yes. So uh, as EARP, yeah. uh, we are from the professional background of nuclear. Uh, we've seen a lot of perception. Uh, can I say negative perception about nuclear energy? Yeah. Uh, anytime you mention the word nuclear, uh, there's some form of fear. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> people fear safety. Mm. Uh, we are getting questions like, uh, will we get uh, birth if you have this uh, energy? Yeah. I can assure you, will give birth. Uh, <laughs> is it safe? Will it uh, will it destroy us? Yeah. So, as professionals, uh, we are saying, some of us have worked uh, in the nuclear industry for more than 20 years. Uh, it is safe. We are still alive. You can see I'm not dead. Yeah. Uh, some of us have worked in this industry, let's say in the hospital, uh, for, for some time. And we've seen it's very safe. So uh, as our nuclear advocate, we want to see the government accept this nuclear energy uh, and, and use it for the benefit of the Kenyan population. Yeah. If you look around all over the world, uh, uh, for example, in the U.S. alone, uh, they have 90, more than 90 nuclear power plants. If you go to France here, they have 56 nuclear power plants. Uh, across in uh, China, about 55 nuclear power plants. Uh, even India has 22 nuclear power plants. A new country like say, UAE, a very new, has about five nuclear power plants. But when it comes to Africa, uh, it is uh, not a good situation. Uh, only one country has a nuclear power plant, and that is South Africa. Yeah. So about 52 countries in Africa have no uh, nuclear power plant. And if you look at the cost, uh, what we pay here in Kenya is quite high than what is paid there in China or in the US, simply because we use expensive forms of uh, energies. Yeah. Yes. So what would you say are the benefits of nuclear energy in, a, in an economy? Yes, so uh, there's um, many benefits to the nuclear energy, for example, to the Kenyan economy and yeah. also to Africa. Yeah. Uh, number one, this will create jobs uh, to the youth uh, and also to the uh, businessmen. There's opportunity uh, for the business sector uh, uh, to drive for this uh, nuclear energy. Uh, if you look at the environment, uh, nuclear energy does not produce uh, carbon. Mm. Therefore, it does not affect the atmosphere. So the issue of climate change, which is a very big issue, is not affected by the nuclear. Uh, nuclear energy is the only form that is, uh, uh, doesn't affect the environment. So uh, if you are an environmentalist, uh, then we can partner uh, and say nuclear energy is the best option. Yeah. Then also uh, nuclear energy is stable. Uh, uh, the issue of blackouts will be a thing of the past. Yeah. Then in terms of cost, because the cost is a very big component, especially because we are a third world country. Uh, any other thing, you have to weigh the option. Which one is cheaper, which one is more efficient? Yeah. So if you weigh nuclear and uh, hydro and uh, these other forms of energy, nuclear is a cheaper, is a cheaper o option. Then it's also effective. Then in the long run, uh, nuclear uh, lifespan is 60 years. Sometimes in the US it goes to 8 years. So one power plant alone can, uh, has a life cycle of more than 60 years. If you compare to a geothermal, a one drill uh, has a lifespan of probably five years. Uh, also, it has to be monitored. There are several disadvantages. Uh, solar may be a lifespan of another five years or 10 years maximum. Yeah. It's a good, good quality. Yeah. So if you put all these factors together, uh, mm. nuclear energy uh, is, a better, is a better option of energy. Yeah. Mm. When it, come, when it comes to advocacy, we know the youths uh, are 60%, 70% of, of the Kenyan population. Mm. So how are you incorporating the youth when it comes to advocating for nuclear energy? Yes, so uh, uh, for sure this has been a challenge because uh, uh, a good number of our members have been the, uh, the next generation. Yeah. But now we've opened it up, we are accepting the youth, and uh, we are doing activities that the youth can identify with. For example, uh, 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 we have a program uh, for schools, uh, for young people. We are, we are trying to promote the nuclear energy in each and every school uh, to at least have a nuclear energy uh, club. Also, uh, uh, to the primary school, we are trying to promote this uh, nuclear energy. Uh, we package this uh, language to a level where they can understand. Also, we are using the, the sports people, the uh, sports sector, uh, also celebrities, uh, because they have a language, they have a, a community that uh, it's only them they can access. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, we are trying to use uh, youth, youth leaders, uh, for example, so that they can accept uh, this uh, uh, nuclear energy. And, uh, and any other person, we are open uh, to the youth and they are welcome to join our association.
Yes. Apart from Kenya, which other African countries are contemplating uh, putting power plants or nuclear power plants in Africa? Yes, uh, as I've said earlier, yeah. uh, nuclear energy is really growing. Yeah. And uh, we are seeing a situation where in the next five years, we shall have more than maybe 600 nuclear power plants. Mm. Uh, we are so happy that uh, the African community are also trying to accept this technology. For example, now, uh, Kenya is in advanced stage. Uh, stage. Uh, we have uh, identified the location of the nuclear power plant. We've put, uh, the government has put a nuclear uh, program already. There's a nuclear uh, parastatal uh, specifically to uh, help in this group. Uh, there's also a nuclear regulator uh, specifically to help in this. But also we are seeing other countries, for example, here in Uganda, uh, Tanzania, uh, Ghana, I know is in a very advanced stage, Egypt, uh, Nigeria, and Zambia. So those seven countries are uh, uh, quite above the others. And uh, I think in the next probably 10 years, uh, we shall have like uh, maybe five power plants in, in Africa. Yeah. Yes. Uh, is there any regulation when it comes to nuclear energy? Yes, nuclear energy is a highly regulated uh, industry, just like pharmaceuticals yeah. and aviation. Like, for example, aviation, you don't just wake up and drive your plane in there. Mm. Uh, also, same to ph pharmaceuticals, you don't just wake up and sell drugs. Mm. Same to nuclear. So here, uh, every uh, step must be checked because there's no room for error. Every uh, process must be checked by a third independent party. Someone must come and look at the process. So in Kenya now, we've done what is known as sighting. Uh, that means we've identified the location. Uh, there's a team that was going around uh, to check which is the best location, uh, do environmental assessment, uh, that is done, and that one has to be licensed. Then we call the international community, uh, because this is a small uh, community uh, for nuclear. They check our process. Uh, did you do it right? Uh, so that we don't have that error. Then we move to the next step. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's a regulated sector. It is checked to ensure safety and also to minimize any form of error. As you do your sensitization uh, of nuclear energy, what are the challenges that you have faced so far? Yes, there are several challenges. Uh, just like with any technology, mm -hmm. uh, there are several challenges. Uh, for, uh, our biggest challenge is... Uh, public perception. Uh, for some, I don't know why, the, the, the public fear nuclear. That term yeah. nuclear, <laughs> someone wants to run away. Yeah. But we are saying, please uh, accept nuclear. Because you use it in every day. For example, if you are sick, if you go to the hospital there, uh, x-ray, that's a nuclear uh, facility. Mm. If you have a, a breast, for example, you use a mammography, that's nuclear. If it is dental, there's a dental x-ray. Uh, if it is tumor, for example, uh, they, you want to be treated, you'll use uh, radiotherapy, that's a form of radiation uh, therapy, that's a form of nuclear. Uh, if it is uh, agriculture, uh, for example, uh, the seeds, you want the seeds to, to store the seeds, you can irradiate those seeds, yeah. uh, give it energy, that's a form of nuclear. After the road has been done, you want to check the quality of the road, uh, you can use a form of nuclear to test. Uh, this uh, uh, structure, if you want to check the quality, you can only use nuclear to see what, what cannot be seen by the eyes. Yeah. Uh, in the aviation sector, uh, the flight has to be checked by a nuclear technique. So uh, uh, the issue of safety, we are telling the public, please uh, don't fear. Uh, this form of energy is available and is being used every day. Yeah. So the other challenge is the uh, issue of uh, funding. We are a, a professional association. We fund ourselves. Every uh, month we pay to our kitty so that we drive this agenda because uh, this is a call for us. We feel uh, the only contribution we can do for the country is uh, uh, to promote this energy because mm -hmm. some of us uh, have knowledge about uh, this subject. So that's another challenge of the funding. Uh, we can do a lot, but sometimes we are limited by the, uh, the resource. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what other institutions are you working with to make sure the message of nuclear energy advocacy gets to the people? 
Yes, that's a good question. Uh, as a professional association, we are open to several institutions. For example, uh, we are working with so many schools, uh, we are working with so many environmentalists, we are working with uh, so many primary schools, we are there with the, all the universities, we are uh, with the different government agencies. Since our members are from uh, different areas, uh, we are in so many research institutions, uh, so many universities, I've said, uh, so many government agencies so the, we are open uh, we are not limited uh, in terms of partnership we are open to all these other institutions yeah yes um, as we finish what is your message to Kenyans out there who have a bad perception of nuclear energy yes uh, indeed uh, the message to Kenyans uh, yeah. for example uh, you are a businessman mm. you have a you're doing welding uh, quantify the cost, how much are you paying for the electricity? You have a saloon there or a kinyozi there. Uh, how much money uh, do you pay to the electricity? Uh, in your household, how much money uh, do you pay? But now to the, to the industry, uh, for example, uh, industry, industry that is doing production, uh, the cost uh, of electricity impacts the cost of the product. Mm. Uh, if the electricity is a, a little bit uh, a good price, the product again will be of a good price. So uh, we are saying going forward, please uh, consider, uh, help us push this agenda of nuclear technology so that uh, the cost of your product uh, can become fairer to the, to the public. Yeah. Uh, because uh, if you use these other forms of technology, uh, the cost is higher. Uh, the efficiency is uh, lower. Uh, nuclear is efficient. Uh, the base load is, is higher. That means it's available. So. Uh, uh, to the Kenyan community, uh, please uh, accept this uh, uh, technology. Yeah. Yes. Lastly, where can the people find you? Your offices, your social media platforms. Take it away. Yes. So uh, we are available. Our offices are in Westlands, mm -hmm. uh, but we are, remember we are a network. So yeah. a network is people. It's not uh, the office. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you uh, look at us at the social media, uh, just search East Africa Association of Radiation Protection, uh, you'll get our uh, contacts. We are there on Facebook, uh, on Twitter, uh, on TikTok, and, and uh, uh, all these other forms of social media interactions. And also I'm available, you can uh, reach me uh, if you have any event uh, or something that you need clarification, I'm available and you can share more about this nuclear uh, 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 technology. Yes. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Yeah. Asante sana. And there we have it folks, Colin Somondi, uh, the lead advocate and atomic ambassador from EAARP. Uh, for more shows like this, continue watching Top TV. My name is Wellington Kodek. It's a goodbye for now. Thank you.